Hi there, beautiful people. You need a heavy weight and a light weight for this class. To get started, come to the top of your yoga mat. We're gonna flow first without our weights, getting all our technique in place. So let's start with feet, the base, our foundation. Feet are gonna be hip distance apart and your toes spread nice and wide. The knuckle of the big toe, that big toe mound, wants to press down. And instead of letting that collapse your inner arches, at the same time, lift your inner arches. Feet stay fixed, knees are gonna rotate away from each other, you'll feel your booty turn on. And then just check that your rib cage is stacked on top of your pelvis and your pelvis is in neutral. So by the time you've got all those little markers in place, you should feel quite strong, your muscles beaming. And then I want you to just relax your tummy as you take a big breath in. And then breathe out your tummy getting smaller again and you'll feel that all the muscles in your legs your bum your back are supporting this breath and we're going to now imagine we're holding a weight in our hands you can even just bring your fingertips together like you're holding the round part of your kettlebell or any household item and I want you to press the arms up with the shoulders if you want to you can coordinate your breath and exhale allowing that weight to lift up and the inhale, bringing it back down, going as slow or as quick as you choose. We're just getting the techers in place. Notice if you've got one shoulder wanting to take over, getting both arms to work together. Okay, we're going to do one more. And then you're gonna imagine you've brought that weight into both of your hands, very, very close to your thighs. And you wanna keep the weight close to your legs the entire time. You can put a little tiny bend in your knees. Make sure you're gonna hip hinge from the hips and not any movement coming into the back. So you're sliding your weight very, very close to the legs. And on the way up, it stays close, but the pelvis squeezes back up underneath your ribs. So again, spine stays in neutral as we go through this deadlift. And this is such a nice habit to come into even in your yoga practice because we actually need our back body to be on when we're coming into forward folds. So we wanna train those upper attachments of the hamstrings not to get all weak and over pulled. We're gonna do just one more all the way down and all the way back up. And then you're gonna shift your imaginary weight again into your fingertips touching like you're holding a ball. Open your feet a little wider, turn your toes out at a 45 degree angle. Imagine your knees wanna rotate even wider than that, but the feet are staying in the same position. Stack your ribs again on top of your pelvis. Check your pelvis is in neutral. Drive the knees wide and then come up. Now, I want you to think of keeping your body fairly stacked up perpendicular to the floor so that what we're not doing is displacing to try and get a bigger deeper movement it's actually really quite stacked and you might not go as deep but you've got more integrity in the musculature of the body and you should feel your booty a little bit more we're going to do one more <laughs> and then once you've done your squats you're going to bring your hands underneath you stepping back into all fours so we're going to start off fairly simple. I want you to take um, your right hand all the way across to your left thigh and then bring it underneath you again, left hand to right thigh and underneath you. What we're going to do is we're going to do this a few more times, but making it a bit harder, curl your toes and lift your knees one inch off the ground. Now this might already feel like a lot. You can stay where you are. You don't have to go anywhere else. But if you wanna take it a little bit deeper, without moving anything, can you just take the right hand to the left thigh and replace it? Again, touch, opposite hand, opposite leg on the other side and replace it. Now, when I say nothing moves, what I mean is sometimes as we lift the one hand, there's a big old twist in the pelvis or the shoulders as we try and compensate for the lack of support. So I want you to try and keep everything as it is, just Letting the hand be the only thing that changes. <laughs> Last one. Whoop, whoop. Shake your tail because you're happy. Shake out your wrists. Well done, guys. Okay, good old fashioned child's pose. <laughs> Don't get overexcited though. We're not going to rest just yet. Often when I'm doing child's pose, what I realize is I sort of dump into my joints and that, you know, child's pose, you can get away with it. It's no big deal, but we can actually load child's pose, which is pretty cool. So I want you to first do a sloppy child's pose. Um, maybe getting your legs parallel, heels right under your bum. Good old fashioned sloppiness. And then all I want you to change 
change is how much weight you have going through your head and through your arms and actually try and de-weight those points. So now, if you had to take your free hands and palpate your belly, you'll actually notice there's a little bit of tension in your tummy and that's just to make sure your body doesn't flop forward. Take your hands onto your booty. You'll feel that the butt muscles are also a little bit more awake now. Keep both of those muscles working as a co-contraction as you lift up into kneeling. This is similar to deadlifts. We're hip hinging as we go back with our hips over our heels, chest is coming forwards, and then we're gonna recover back up. Now, as you're moving, let's see if we can coordinate the breath to this. So inhale on the way down. Belly expands, exhale, it gets smaller on the way up. Let's do that a couple more times. Inhale and exhale. And this is gonna be our last one. Good stuff. Next is pigeon, bring your hands under your shoulders. Extend your left leg back, turn your right leg into pigeon. And don't be too stressed about getting this front leg 90 degrees. A V shape is absolutely perfect. Press into your back toes so that you feel that left glute really working. And then press into the right shin so you feel your right glute really working. Now, again, fingertips touching like you're holding your ball. Bring your imaginary weight close to your chest. And I want you to lean forwards and then really focus on your butt muscles bringing you back up. You're gonna do this twice more. Last one. Good job, guys. Bring your hands underneath you. Glide your right knee backwards in space, almost like you're gonna do an all fours, but a little cheeky twist to face the long left side of your mat. Right hand is under shoulder, left hand high fives me. We're gonna imagine gate posture from our yoga practice. And instead of just holding it as a static pose, we're going to move it so the top hand stays perpendicular to the ground. As you lift up, you're lifting the chest over the belly button, over your pelvis. Keep the arm perpendicular to the ground, right hand down again. Two more of those. Focus on your glutes helping you do this movement. And down, focus on them giving you stability. This is your last one. Awesome work. And down, nice. Now the right hand is under you. You're gonna shift onto your right side. You're gonna imagine just the left hand is holding your light weight. And what we wanna take care of guys, can you see here the right side of my body? What I'm doing is I'm not collapsing and getting the floor to do everything for me. I'm sort of imagining that my spine is in front angle in a line. Okay, so you got from the top view this neutral S curve. Now your top left elbow, lock it in your side. Give me like a little 1980s Barbie elbow. And I want you to close the windscreen wiper into your belly and then lift it up. Now what we're doing here is we're working the external rotation muscles of the shoulder. So you might feel them squeezing a little bit on the top. We're gonna do five repetitions in total. It's not gonna feel like much, but at the top, really squeeze up with a hand without letting that elbow lift. This is your last one. And all the way up. Awesome, you guys, nice. Now, that light weight is gonna stay in our top hand, in the left hand, and the left leg is gonna bend. Right leg at a 45, right arm is at a 45. Keep the right elbow on the ground. We're gonna keep the left arm perpendicular to the floor and using that cross diagonal line of energy in the body, we're gonna lift up and down. Lift up and down. Last one, up and down. Cool guys, now coming all the way up, think wild thing. Bring your right hand under your shoulder. As you can see, I'm demonstrating a really collapsed shoulder here. I want you to press the floor away and rotate the crease of the elbow towards your fingertips. So you've got that beautiful external rotation, the one we just worked on our side body. Left arm is still up in the air. Think wild thing now, bum pushing up and down for three reps. One and down. Two and three, you've done amazing. Now slide the right leg underneath your right hip. So you're thinking 290 degrees, bring your body to stack over your pelvis, hold your weight again, fingertips touching, hands making an imaginary ball. We're gonna go straight up and down for five, okay? Five lunges here, squeeze on the way up, go all the way down, squeeze and down. Four, 
Nice one, you guys. Last one. When you've done the last one, bring yourself all the way up. Have a little victory dance. We're still just warming up. Come to the top of your mat now on the other side. Toes spread. Big toe mound down. Inner arches up. So you've got talk. T-O. R Q U E in the foot. We now put that same intention in the legs. Feet stay fixed, knees screw outwards. The same intention in the spine. Pelvis is in neutral, ribs stack over. Fingertips touching, you're holding your imaginary ball, lifting the shoulders up as we rise with arms, letting them draw down as the arms come down. Coordinate the breath, exhale on the way up, inhale on the way down. Last one. Shift your imaginary weight to your hands. Dead lifting, keep the weight close to the body as you hip hinge to go down and squeeze your bum to come up. Inhale on the way down. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last two. Good, really use your bum. Final one. Great job, guys. Open the feet a little bit wider, turn the toes out. And by the way, how far you've turned your toes out is totally up to you. But remember to get your knees to imagine they wanna rotate wider than the legs. Again, that creates that torque. Fingertips together, hold your imaginary weight close to your body. Keep your body quite stacked as you go down and up. So you're not letting the feet collapse, giving you a more depth. You're actually staying quite strong in all of your joints, which is making your muscles work harder. <sighs> yep, we're gonna have a heavy weight later. Get excited about that. <laughs> okay, team, last one. Bring your hands under your shoulders, step your knees back underneath your hips. Very simple to start, right hand, left leg touch. Bring the hand under you, left hand touch. Bring it under you, curl the toes, lift the knees, right hand touch. Under, left. How still can you keep the whole body? Two more. Last one. Left leg, bring it into your pigeon. Right toes curl, right leg extends, booty is on. Left shin pushes through the ground, left booty is on. Imaginary weight close to you, three repetitions, come forward. As you go up, try and avoid the back doing everything, work from your butt instead. Last one. You've done so amazing. We've got gate posture coming up next. Hands under shoulders, left knee under your belly button. Turn to the long right side of your mat. Light weight, it's gonna press perpendicular to the ground in the top arm. Try not to collapse in your other joints. Stay nice and tall. And we're gonna rise and lower. One, down, two. Control it from the glutes. Three, awesome. Come onto your side. Get your spine set up, use your hand, give your brain information when you're like, yep, ready to go. Elbow in, holding your weight, five repetitions. Now, in this one, it's so easy to kind of just flop about. <laughs> I want you to lock the shoulder blade on your ribs and really feel that you're going into full range against some kind of a resistance, like, I don't know, sticky toffee or something. Almost like you've got a little stretchy band and you're pulling it up <laughs> and helping it Resist down. Last couple. When you've done number five, bring it on down, great. Take it in the right hand now, straight up to the ceiling. Lie on your back, bend your right leg. 45 degrees on one leg, on the left leg, 45 on the left arm. Keep your left elbow on the ground. We're gonna press this perpendicular arm straight up to the ceiling. And down. So what you wanna do is notice how this arm kind of makes all funny shapes in the air. Can you keep it pointing straight up to the ceiling? When you've done the last one, we're gonna hold it there. Bring the left hand under your shoulder, check you're not sloppy, press. Look at where the elbow is pointing, crease of the elbow over fingertips, right? External rotation. Squeezy bum, we're gonna lift and lower. Here we go, up, one. Bring it down, two. Feel those buns. Three, you've done amazing. Once we're up there, now the left leg comes underneath you. Okay, stack your shoulders over your belly button. Bring your imaginary weight again, really close to your body. Curl the back toes, we have five lunges here, up and down. 
Now, while you're counting to five as we move, think about, remember that talk where the foot stays fixed but the knee rotates outwards? This is so good for your butt. <laughs> so if you can think of that talk, it's gonna really pay dividends. We got one more to go. Yay, victory dance time. Yeah. Uh, uh. Are we ready to add some weights? I think you are. And yes, we're gonna go heavy. I can sense your enthusiasm. <laughs> Let's get our heavy weight up in our hands. Feet are solid. Inner arch is left. Rotate the knees away from each other. Rib cage stacks over pelvis. Every muscle is on. Let's press it up. One and down. Two, three, four, try not to let the ribs flare, five, you've done amazing, bring it in, switch the weight, we're going to keep the weight close now, deadlift, one, <laughs> get that torque in your legs, <sighs> knees are rotating out but the feet are fixed, they're in parallel, <sighs> you've number five, Good, guys. Bring the weight up close to your body, toes out. Very slightly so the knees can go wider. So it's not about how low you can go, this is about how much integrity have you got. Five squats. Can you feel your butt working the whole way through the pathway? Number five, awesome. Put the weight down on the left hand side. Bring your hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Lift the knees one inch. Take the right hand underneath your belly, grab hold of the weight, shift it to the opposite side of your mat. Keep going. Notice how your body's adjusting. We got one more to go. Left hand pulling the weight through. Awesome job, you guys, you did amazing. Okay, bringing the weight up into your chest in a kneeling position. Maybe get your legs like parallel, thinking child's pose up and down. One, two, so you're hip hinging. You're not letting your spine round a lot and you're controlling the movement. Very, very good. When you've done number five, set the weight down, right leg into pigeon. Yeah, you are correct. Pigeon movements with the big weight. If you're feeling like the big weights are maybe a stretch, get your light weight, it's all good. You're doing amazing even just getting through this exercise. Here we go, five times. Awesome work team. Thanks for letting me be quiet with you through that one. <laughs> We've got our gate posture next. Bring the right leg under your belly button. I think a light weight here is the way to go. Gate posture's got right hand underneath us, left leg is extended. Before you go anywhere, let the booty take the load. When you're ready, we've got five to lift and lower. <sighs> Notice how I don't move the weight. It stays on top of me all the time. Bend the weight in carefully. Hold on to the round part of your weight or whatever you're using. Make sure you've got a good grip with your fist. Lie on your side. Now here we're gonna go 10. Now I got a whole big fat two over here. And you think that's light, but when you're doing these external rotations, man, they're gonna burn. So make sure if it gets too much, you just drop the weight, it's all good. You ready? Game face on, let's do this. 10. Remember your spine. Remember your neat little package in your body so the arm is isolating. Whoa. This is actually a really good exercise if you've had any rotator cuff issues. That lowering down of the weight helps to take some of the inflammation out of the tendon. It's a good one. It gets the centration of the head of the humerus, so the top of your arm bone lives right in the middle of its socket. Good news, team. Guess what? This is number 10. Oh, yay! <laughs> okay, put your tight arm in the air. Shake it about. <laughs> because now it is going to work for quite some time. We're going to get the weight being held kind of like a loose handbag, but press it up. So that arm is lifting up against gravity. 
Same arm as leg is bent, opposite arm and leg 45. And keeping the elbow on the ground, we have five repetitions. That diagonal cross line of the body is what you're focusing on working. Let's take it up. One, two. Good, and you can do a little exhale on the way up. And a big belly inhale on the way down. We've got one more. Good. Right hand under the shoulder, boom. Get strong there. External rotation, we've got five on our wild things. And you've got to really put your mind in your butt because your butt is probably like mine and is a little bit lazy. Cool, when you've done number five, hold it up there. Slide the right leg underneath you, boom. Okay, so now you've got the choice, lightweight or heavyweight. We have got 10 repetitions, it's quite a lot. So it's up to you. We're gonna victory dance like nobody's business straight after these bad boys. Are you ready? Let's do this. Now remember the talk, okay? You've got this. Stack your head over your shoulders. Don't let it drift too far forward. You're not looking at your computer screen now. Can you focus on the muscles that you actually want working? <laughs> Numero dez, I think, is the right Portuguese. I'm trying to learn Portuguese. Lower the weight down, guys. Step up, I promised you a victory dance. Dance around with your kettlebell. Shake your goods. Shake your goods. You mean, that's like a workout on its own. We should just do a whole workout like this. <laughs> Let's put the weight back over there. Get your other weight. You're gonna need it. <sighs> okay. Are you feeling ready? You look so ready. Okay. You might be like, can I try the lightweight for some of the other exercises? Yes, of course you can. You can change it around, guys. The only thing I ask you is try and remember which weight you used if we did one side. But this bilateral stuff, go to town, take the lighter weight, it's all good. Okay, squeeze the tush, get the torque. Let's do this presses. One, two, Three, four, and five. Deadlift, one. Notice how my head isn't looking down. I'm keeping it in line with my body. So we hip hinging is the only joint doing the movement. Squats, you look like you're ready. Let's take it down and up. One, two. Now I know notoriously, even though my right side is, my dominant side is kind of weaker, so I'm having to really focus on it. Well done team. When you've done number five, take your weight rather over to the right side of the mat. Think all fours, knees one inch off the ground, drag your weight underneath you. So everything is solid as you take the weight. Good, and as you get stronger, you can move the weight further and further away from you. <sighs> awesome, guys, you've done so well. We've got pigeon up next. Left leg, turning it out. Right leg is nice and long. Curl the toes underneath you and extend the leg. Grab hold of your weight, lower and lift for five. One, <sighs> two, Three, four, this is it. Well done, guys. Coming into gate posture, you've got your light weight now. You're pressing it up above you. You're keeping it strong, perpendicular to the ground. Remember, before you start moving, put your mind in that peach. Tell your peach you've got this. <laughs> and then we're coming up. One, two. So I'm very purposeful with my movements, right? I'm not flailing, which I quite like doing most of the time, <laughs> but not when I've got weights. Well, after you've done your number five, you've got your light weight, bring it close to you, change your grip so you can do these external rotation exercises and you can really feel like you're in control of the weight. Check your spine when you're like, yep, spine feels good. We're lifting the weight up one, Yes, all the way to 10, I know, it's a lot. But we're going quite slow. 
So it's an opportunity for you to focus on your breathing. Opportunity to, for you to focus on the shoulder blade and its positioning. Seven, eight, whoo, nine. Oh man, this is my week one. 10, oh, line your back, get that weight. Press it straight up to the ceiling. Make sure that that shoulder is also pushing against gravity, okay? You wanna make sure you're going anti-gravity muscles. 45 on the left, arm and leg. Keep the elbow on the left hand down. We're gonna press it straight up. One, and down. Two. Three. Four. Oopsie, I think I just head butted the other weight. And five, don't do that. When you've done the last one, we're thinking wild thing. Prepare left arm, prepare shoulder and elbow. Let's do this. One, two, three, four. You've done so well. Five, keep it up. Take the left leg underneath you. Change weights if you want to. We've got 10 repetitions, so I need you to feel ready, confident, and strong for what's to come. I'd rather your technique is good and your weights are low. Are you ready to boss this? Let's go. One. Remember the talk. Rib cage over pelvis. Keep pelvis in neutral. We got two more to go. Come on, squeeze that booty. <laughs> Yay! Okay, show me your booty. Yeah, shake it. Makes us feel good when we shake our bits. Okay, guys, you have smashed it. To close off this practice, I want you to bring your feet underneath your hips. Hands on your belly, take a huge breath in. Slowly breathe out, but relax. Two more like that, inhale gently. And exhale. One more. Awesome, guys. Now remember, it's super important for you to finish off any movement that you've done with something that makes you feel good. If that's something a little high intensity, you go ahead and do that. If it's more peaceful, like a meditation or a shavasana, please take a bit of time. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.